Hello YouTube, I have a little video for you. It may be boring, but I hope it's at least useful. This is setting a machine tool up, or really anything that was running on three-phase, with a VFD, or variable frequency drive. Residential electrical basically just gives you two legs of 120 power from the transformer. If you add those two legs together, since they're out of phase, or on opposite poles, it creates something called 240. Typically in North America, it's called 240 single phase because it's using a center tapped transformer. Unfortunately though, for us, when we go to get these big mills or big lathes, they run on something called three phase. Now three phase power is actually a lot more efficient and there was a push early on to make residential three phase as well because you could run a smaller wire to deliver the same amount of power. Our electrical grid was already pretty well set up and nobody really wanted to do that big switch over. So here in the United States, we reserve three phase power for big industrial machines like this. Okay, so now that we have that as a base of knowledge, let's talk about how to actually run these things on single phase power. You could either get something called a rotary phase converter, a rotary phase converter, which is just basically a giant three phase motor that you spin up and it generates the third leg of power and you can hook your machines up to it. Or a variable frequency drive, or short for that, VFD. Now that's not all entirely true because you could also get something called a static phase converter, which is a little box and it kind of chops up the signal to create the three phases, but they're not very efficient and they're kind of outdated. A VFD takes your 220 single phase, turns it into direct current, and then resynthesizes it into three phases that are 120 degrees apart. So now that we know a little bit about phases, let's talk about the frequencies that make up those phases. Frequency here is denoted by cycles. Here in the United States, the most common is 60. Although some parts of California in the early 1900s were running on 50 hertz. That's how fast it goes from positive or peak voltage to negative or zero. Now, the frequency that is input into this motor will determine its speed. For instance, if I brought this motor over to Europe where they use 50 hertz as the standard frequency, it would run slower. This little computer has the capability of changing that frequency. However, there is varying opinions on this, as you'll probably find out or may already know, because these motors tend to get hot when driven at a lower frequency. So I opted to program my machine with a standard 60 hertz frequency and do speed control with the belts and gearbox. This is a one horsepower motor. So you wanna make sure when you size your VFD that you do it slightly larger. In this case, I'm running a VFD that is capable of producing power for three horsepower motors. Now to wire this little computer to that motor, you need to disconnect your switch. If you maintain this switch directly connected to the VFD, you will fry it. I want to highlight that this applies to forward and reversing switches since it changes the phases input for the motor, unlike this power feed motor which just has a simple switch that turns it on and off. This motor can use the switch because it doesn't do any forward or reversing. So run your power in directly to the motor. Then use signal wires from a terminal block on your VFD to control the switch. In this case, we have 24 volts of power sent out to the center of the drum switch, and it comes back through terminal one and two as forward and reverse. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, programming these things is not easy. Uh, I would recommend using a manual and the help of ChatGPT. One thing you're gonna to wanna to set up is your ramp up and ramp down. That's how fast this inverter will go from zero hertz to 60 hertz. This, this adds to the smooth startup and smooth decel of your motor. There's a few little caveats to this, and that's called carrier frequency. Imagine an AC waveform that looks like this. This is what is supplied from the generator or power station. Now this little computer cannot produce a perfect waveform, or it could be a pure sine wave inverter, but those are very expensive. So what it does is it uses switches to turn on and off the power to roughly simulate what that AC waveform is supposed to look like, depending on what frequency range you're in. So the frequency would be really close together for high frequency or spread out for low frequency. 
Imagine a pencil dotting along that line. That's called carrier frequency. And that's the inverter turning on and off at a set rate. In this case, you're gonna want your carrier frequency between 12 and 16 kilohertz. That's how many times per second it turns on and off to sim simulate that frequency. The reason for that is twofold. One, it makes your motor sound better. So let's say you used a low carrier frequency like eight kilohertz. Well, it's gonna make this motor sound terrible. It's gonna scream and it's gonna squeal. And that's because the AC waveform that's going into it looks like this, on, off, on, off, on, off. And that's how it's creating those waves. So there's giant gaps in between it. So if you can make your carrier frequency higher, those dots are gonna be closer together and it's just gonna make the winding sound better. Something to keep in mind is that that inverter is gonna have to work a lot harder at a higher carrier frequency. So make sure to size it proportionally larger than your total load so that it is within the perfect range. If it's sized exactly to the same load you're gonna put on it, it's gonna, probably gonna get really hot. So uh, you'll have to run it at a lower carrier frequency like 12 kilohertz or even lower. So whenever I turn this switch off, that's your decel time, it immediately starts. That's how fast it takes that inverter to go from whatever frequency you're running that motor at to zero. If your decel time is too long, let's say you're running four seconds, your carrier frequency is gonna stretch that out. So basically if your carrier frequency is low and your decel rate is long, like four seconds, you're gonna have these giant gaps between it generating that signal. The second you turn that switch off, it turns into a generator because you have this entire spindle turning that motor. And it's gonna shoot power from the motor back to the inverter. And it'll push power between the gaps of when it's on because what that thing is trying to do is trying to control the speed of this motor to zero. It's trying to basically, it's still, it's when you turn that thing off, it's still putting power to the motor over your decel time, right? So you wanna make sure that you size your decel time and your carrier frequency proportionally so that your motor sounds good, you're not making your inverter too hot, and you're not tripping the breaker on this thing when that motor shoots power back to it on deceleration. One thing you'll have to learn to accept is that these VFDs don't have any braking, or in other words, they don't have anywhere to send that power to when the motor is turned off. So you can either install a braking unit, which is basically just a pack of resistors that sucks up the power, or you can just live with it and uh, be happy. Well guys, I really hope that was useful. Uh, Might have hopefully helped you out a little bit. And here's it running.